Hey, how you doing? Good morning. Welcome to another time here, another time to pray. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're leading ourselves in a place of praying, looking at the uh, book of Daniel. We're presently in Daniel chapter 6, is 4. Uh, we saw that uh, God decided to promote, to bless Daniel. We saw that there were people that were against it. There were enemies in the, in the, in the, on the way, as it were. Yesterday, we emphasized the fact that we have an enemy. Today, we're going to you know, go further and probably talk about the fact that we don't just have an enemy, we have enemies, right? Uh, we have enemies, right? So, you know, as a, as a result of the fall, yes, we have the devil as enemy, right? But when man fell, man, as it were, fell from a place of glory, right? There was a corruption in our nature, right? We're not the same people that God created in our original form, right? You, you saw that Adam and Eve, they have what we call the knowledge of good and evil, right? We might not know the fullness of what that means, but one thing we know for sure is that then we have a lower nature that was created in us. We call the flesh, right? We have the flesh. So it's not just a devil we have to battle with, he even probably only had to battle with the devil. But as a result of the fall, we have to battle with not just the devil, but our own self. Because inside of us, then is created the flesh, the lower nature, right? Um, we, the falling nature, right? So take the devil away, we see you have an enemy. And that enemy is inside of us, right? So in, in another sense, we'll say, we are the enemy. We found the enemy, and the enemy is us, right? We are our best friend, just as much as we are our worst enemy, right? A man on his own can destroy himself. He does need someone else, right? Because inside of us is what we call the flesh, the fallen nature. And if we don't deal with our own selves properly and rightly, we can destroy ourselves, right? We don't need the devil to destroy us. We can destroy ourselves, you know, so... Probably when we look at the fact that we have enemies or enemy, the first person we want to look at is our own self, because that's the closest to us, is how do we deal with the fallen nature that is inherent in us, right? So in inherent in us, you know, we, we say this popular proverb and say, if there's no enemy within, the enemy without can do you nothing. If there's no enemy inside of you, the devil can do you nothing. If there's no enemy inside of yourself, the world can do you nothing, right? Daniel's first enemy that he had to overcome was himself, right? Daniel won because he overcame him, his own self. And that's the same thing for each one of us. We're only going to win in the battle, the affairs of life, if we first overcome, win the battle against our own self. It's not the battle against our parents, it's not the battle against our sibling, it's not the battle against our friends, it's not the battle against your boss, it's not the battle against your colleague. The first battle you need to win if you're going to succeed in this life, if you're going to be an overcomer in life, is a battle against yourself. You have to win a battle against yourself. Right. And someone like Stephen Covey wrote the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And you'll see that he, he structured that book. That whole book is, is a scripturally uh, leading book. You know, every principle there is taken from the scriptures, right? Even though it's not put chapter this or, or that, but it's all supported on the guided by its scripture. Right, the spirit of the scripture is in that book. And you will see that Stephen divided that book into three parts, right? One is winning the war within, winning the war outside of yourself, then rejuvenating yourself, keeping it all going, right? So you cannot win the battle of life. You cannot win the war against yourself, right? You have to win against yourself before you can win against the devil and people outside of you. Well, let's go ahead and pray. We'll continue afterwards. Sister Banke, we are welcome. Good <laughs> afternoon, Ma. Bless you. Yeah. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. We're well, just sharing on Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. Yeah. Just like we, we've been doing that yesterday also till today. You know, the key thing in Daniel chapter 6, verse 4 is that coming from verse 3, God intended to bless Daniel. But verse 4 tells us there was an enemy. 
God wanted to bless Daniel, but there was an enemy. God wanted to bless Daniel, but there was an obstruction, right? And when we look at enemy, even though we talk about the fact that we have an enemy, because the Bible says that we should be sober, we should be peaceful and vigilant because we have an enemy. But the truth is that we don't just have an enemy, we have enemies. Mm. The first enemy we have is not the devil. Mm. I mean, the devil used to be the only enemy we have when it was Adam and Eve, right? It was the only enemy. But after we gave in to the temptation, deception of the enemy, we created more enemies than the devil, right? The devil is not the first enemy of man right now. The very first enemy of man is our own self because by reason of the fall, a fallen nature was created inside of us. We are not in the original state God created us as. Because we sin, the Bible said, we now gain the knowledge of good and evil. I don't know the fullness of what that means, but one thing I know that's clear in scripture is that a fallen nature was created in the world. We call it the flesh. We call it the whole man. But it's part of us. It's not outside of us. It's something we battle on the inside of us. And our success of failure in life is a function of whether we win against you or he wins against us. Minus the devil. The devil is another enemy. We'll talk about him. But the devil is not our first enemy. The first enemy is our own self. Because inside of us is... is a broken, a fallen nature, the old man, the flesh. And that is enough to win the battle against us, right? So the way we relate with our flesh, whether we overcome it or we subdue it, it determines whether we're victorious in life or not, right? The Bible tells us how to do that. The Bible says that we have the power, we have the ability to subdue the flesh. We are no more in a place where the, the flesh can has the old power over us because Christ has died, right? We have the power to do it, but it's not automatic. If we don't do it, it's going to have the power over us, right? I know there's different misunderstanding when we talk about, oh, the devil, the flesh is dead. It, 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 it. People don't know. When you miss that understanding, you do it at your own predicament, at your own failure. Even though the flesh is supposed to be dead, supposed to be powerless. What is supposed is still powerful. It's, it's powerless or powerful to the extent or the way you relate with it. If you give its way, it will conquer you. It will take you to a place you would never dreamt in your life. Inside of us is the all the wickedness you can never think of. It's inside of us. It's in our fallen nature. We can murder someone, we can do prostitution, we can do OG party, we can do the greatest crime you can ever think of in your life. It's there inside of you, even though you are born again, right? But being born again, you have two natures. You have your spirit that is alive, that is created after God in holiness and true righteousness. It has everything like God inside of it. But it's not only the spirit that is inside of us. We also have the flesh, the fallen nature, that is as wicked as anything. That you can think of. So therefore, instead of us, like Paul would say, there's a struggle inside of me. I want to do good, but I cannot do good. I want to follow the God nature, but there's another nature in me that is saying you cannot follow that. So there's a continuous war inside of me. So Paul says there's a continuous war between the flesh and the spirit, each trying to gain ascendancy over the other, right? The one that gains ascendancy is up to the one that will give power to and the way we give power to it, basically, is what we feed ourselves with. The Bible says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, even to the dividing of the spirit and the soul, right? Even to the dividing of the spirit and the soul. Telling that it's difficult to divide it, but the word of God is sharp enough to cause a dividing of the two of them. The word of God is, is all that you need to feed. If you, the more you feed yourself... With the word of God, you feed your spirit, the more of Christ that can that will live out of you, the more you, you, you win the battle on the inside of you. You know, the, like you said, the, the word is a two-edged sword. There's one side of it that you used to fight against the enemy. There's the other side you used to fight against yourself because you are both your best friend and your worst enemy. Uh, right? And success in life is the extent to which we can kill the flesh and allow the spirit to have ascendancy. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My time is up. Any, anything you want to add to that?
Yeah, praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, just reading through this word that happened, how Daniel was uh, put in charge as leaders over many others, and those who were supposed to lead started enchanting him. It happens in life too. Absolutely. That's why we thank God the Lord has given us this ministry of prayers. He prayed three times a day. Absolutely. In our, in our own life too. Even if we are not passing through, we have children, we have lots of admirers in their life. We have people who want to feel, why is this child like this? Why is this one like this? And the only thing they could do is to find a way of faulting them. It's an opportunity for us to continue to pray for our words and then to teach them how to pray. Daniel prayed three times a day because he yeah. had understanding. So that's my area of concentration. That there are Amen. some other people that they don't have this understanding that they need to pray three times Absolutely. a day. Yes. Yeah. So we that we have had understanding, we should yes. be their caretaker and pray along with them until they catch on it and they Amen. could do likewise so that the Lord will continue to fight the battle for us and win all the battles of life. Daniel won in his own time. I pray our children to win all the battles of their lives in Jesus' amen. name. Amen, 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 amen. Our, our strength is in God. Our strength is not of our own. You know, amen. Jesus Christ says we can do nothing of our own. So the place of prayer is a place where we come into that essential union with him so that his power, his strength, his ability can be given place in our lives to win the battles of life. You know, we... We don't have any strength to avoid any battle on our own, you know. I, I love Jesus Christ saying that on our own we can do nothing, you know. And, and that's what Daniel uh, exercised by praying. He's saying, God, I am not sufficient of myself, but your, let your sufficiency make my insufficiency enough, you know. Yeah, and it's important, you know. We never get to the place where we can do anything on our own, you know. Yeah, so it's not, as we read the word also, it's a place of praying where we, we bring God as well. We open the portal and say, God, come and help me, you know. And unless we invite him, he won't, he won't force us way through. Yeah, and, and the Bible says we, we have been made unto our God kings and priests. You know, place of prayer is our, is our, is our priestly position when we pray. You know, we'll, we'll pray for ourselves, we'll pray for other people also as the priest of God, you know. Um, may God continue to help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, sir. Bless you, man. Have a, have a great remaining of the day. Yeah, have a good weekend. God bless. Bye-bye.